नमस्ते हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू द एन कोर्स रोल ऑफ क्राफ्ट एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इन इंटीरियर आर्किटेक्चर टुडे वी विल डिस्कस मॉड्यूल नंबर 33 एंड कंटिन्यूइंग आवर डिस्कशंस ऑन द कंटिन्यूटी एंड रिवाइवल ऑफ क्राफ्ट वी विल बी फोकसिंग टुडे ऑन द इनोवेशन एंड डेवलपमेंट परस्पेक्टिव सो दिस इज द फोकस लाइक आई सेड द इनोवेशन एंड डेवलपमेंट परस्पेक्टिव एंड वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग इट थ्रू एग्जाम्पल्स लाइक Mr Sam Petroda's work and the National Innovation Council DICRC SEPT University again and IIT Roorkee and of course we'll also see through some references towards the end so since we are talking about the innovation and development and we briefly discussed you know what does innovation mean and what is the uh, perspective on craft revival and then how it is connected to social change but then again uh looking a little bit into detail what innovation means and how do we understand innovation in the context of craft let us also try to see again some more discussions definitions or, or perspectives which are given on the innovation so innovation is defined as the commercialization of all new combinations based on the application of new materials and components the introduction of new processes opening of new markets and the introduction of new organizational forms so in the subsequent modules where we will talk about interventions we will be focusing on the materials processes marketing and the management part and of course the technology and innovation part also there is this concept called the innovation arena and it has four key aspects technology applications market and organization combinations so again all of them play a very important role when we talk about innovation and development and specifically when it's the craft design process in focus and uh, there is also a discussion about the material culture the different processes involved and how the products reach the market and what is important here is also the focus on the organization combinations because the new organizational forms the network which is created and the kind of value chain that gets generated where different stakeholders are situated and uh, the way they are linked and how the entire you know craft process is uh given so much significance not just at their workshop level or at the level of the um, individual creation but how it is connected to different stakeholders how it reaches the market and how the entire organization works so all that is important and innovation comes into picture at all these different levels again innovation has the potential of being a powerful tool or medium that can pivot the movement for reviving these crafts and bringing a social change innovation is not simply about science and technology based studies but also about culture and way of life and throughout this course we have been discussing about it how the innovation and the contemporary interpretation of art craft forms and so to say the creative industries because we are also talking about building crafts and architecture so when we talk about innovation in all these sectors they are rooted to a certain way of life and culture and because the communities are in picture and the way they have been nurtured through different generations is also an important aspect to be understood innovations fail because either they are not known or not accepted by a community or a society so a lot of innovations fail because they are developed they are introduced but they do not go well with the community or they do not gel with the idea of their way of life or it makes them too dependent on on the innovations and sometimes they are not uh, probably not accessible the innovations do not reach them so there are different reasons for that as well it is important to recognize and acknowledge the needs and aspirations of the end users and it is very important so we also discussed about this 
in one of the modules you know where jaya jaitley ji was talking about the same thing and judy freter from kala raksha vidyalaya was also talked about the same thing that the community aspirations the end users uh, aspirations they are very important they need to be given certain creative freedom and that's how collaborations and innovations are going to you know uh, give good results and ensure that the innovation reaches them evolve a methodology to deduce the interrelationships between innovation craft revival and social change so we discussed a bit about this as well and it's very important that you know all of them are seen in a cohesive manner with interrelationships being established amongst them now when we talk about innovation and uh, you know uh, the craft revival the two uh, most important the broad types of innovations that come into picture are the incremental innovation and the radical innovation and i have put very briefly you know what is the sort of a difference between them and which is the most preferred one and of course it needs another module to discuss them in detail so if we talk about incremental innovation it largely focuses on the value addition and improvisation of an existing model of an existing system and how to upgrade it uh, through different means that we will see and it's a very slow step by step process and uh, it's mostly um, accepted well by the community because the changes are not very uh, abrupt they are slow and they they evolve out of the needs of the community and an existing system vis-a-vis -vis the radical innovation which completely blows up the existing system or process that replaces it with something entirely new so it's like you know the existing system is blown up and an entirely new system is introduced so the changes could be very abrupt and they are usually not accepted by the community or a particular system which works with certain processes so when we talk about the incremental innovation they introduce innovations by enhancing and improving tools and techniques significantly creating a whole new range of products that is more acceptable by the markets exploring different materials that are inexpensive have a unique vocabulary and evolving new processes without losing focus on the originality of the concepts and without blowing away the existing system so better means of procuring materials could be a small intervention market surveys and exposure to women artisans natural dyes and environmental impact assessment recycling water reusing it coming up with sustainable strategies developing the health and safety strategies for women value addition by creating new range of products and prototypes so these are the small uh, interventions or innovations which are you know introduced and slowly an existing system is upgraded so research has found that policies that address the tail end of the product innovation cycle and encourage demand for innovation are more likely to stimulate incremental innovation than to foster radical innovation so this is just briefly explaining the difference between the two and which is more acceptable form of innovation now since we are talking about innovation and development perspective and we have also been talking greatly about the creative cultural industries and how linking the art craft interior architecture form has generated the new avenues for uh, development so again linking the craft with creative cultural industries and creating platforms where crafts are not just seen as the um, ritualistic practices or the making of the utilitarian products but how they also generate the economy and they also give the livelihood to the people global presence for craft and acceptance so how are different art and craft forms given the global presence and how are they accepted worldwide on a more universal level so creating something like gi tags and then you know competitive designs in the market through which you know these designs get an international recognition so doing these kinds of uh, small activities and then coming up with strategies like gi tags this also is a part of the innovation and development uh, perspective 
technology upgradation of course that we have talked while we were discussing the incremental innovation part but specifically you know focusing on the women their training and capacity building so that will also give very good results and it's already happening but of course if it is scaled up and done on a more elaborate uh, scale then it would give good results because there are a lot of women who can contribute to the you know craft sector and the economy and uh, many times they don't just get the chance to uh, do that so along with their household works if they indulge in these kinds of activities they could also generate a lot of good designs and economy so as consumers we are more aware of materials now not just their visual and sensual appeal but also where they come from why they matter we are more curious about how things are made and who made them so whenever we talk about the art craft and interior architecture there is always you know innately by default the involvement of discussion on material the material culture and since we are talking about innovation and development there is this whole palette of new materials which are coming up and there are a lot of craft persons and artisans and architects who are uh, experimenting with different kinds of materials with traditional skills and trying to come up with certain kinds of prototypes you know which are innovative new different or which do some kind of a value addition to the existing product range and the designs so when we talk about innovation the word collaboration comes into picture collaborative innovation between designer and crafts person is a means of expanding the craft vocabulary and tapping contemporary markets so these collaborations are very important and the only important thing is that they have to give equal importance to the craft person and the designer and uh, in most of the cases actually more importance to the craft person because it's their skill they know the material since ages and as designers probably you know we could just help them with some si sort of an insight on design part also you know it is important to have responsible and strategic design innovation which integrates social economic ecological and cultural aspects so all of these aspects when considered you know holistically that is when the innovation actually nurtures and it actually benefits some more studies and more perspectives so there has been growing international interest in the potential of art making activities to improve health and well being and address problems of social isolation amongst the older people so also strategies like this are considered very innovative where you know the wealth uh, the health and the well being of the uh, elderly or the women is taken care and then they are linked with certain kind of art making or craft uh, activity and processes which could help them tackle this problem of social isolation and you know growing age and um, not involved or not feeling busy doing some work so how you know they are also uh, brought in this value chain and they are important stakeholders who could also uh, contribute you know in the making of uh, the craft design products prototypes while it also helps them overcome their problems and isolation so now we'll briefly see the india decade of innovations and sam petroda and the national innovation council and what is the framework that they have come up with and a little bit discussion on the craft design collaborations very visually and briefly so government of india has declared 2010 2020 as the decade of innovation and the focus is on the inclusive growth so there is a national strategy in place and there is a preparation of road map also the prime minister has set up the national innovation council and this council would create a cross cutting system to provide policies recommendations and methodologies to boost innovation performance in the country with a focus on indian model of innovation so while we have been discussing all the literature that is borrowed from the uh, different researchers and scholars which are non indian and uh, 
yeah a bit of the indian part as well we have been discussing but then to come up with a certain model of innovation that could be said as the model of innovation for india so that was the intention behind setting up this council and coming up with a strategy which proposes a road map for boosting innovations in india and also the aim behind declaring 2010 to 2020 as the decade of national uh, innovation decade of innovation again the intention behind that was also to you know think about the inclusive uh, growth come up with innovation um, strategies for india so the main objectives that the national innovation council follows are formulate a road map for innovation for this decade of innovation that we were discussing about to create a framework which focuses on few very important aspects indian model of innovation inclusive growth policy initiatives which are required to spur innovation then uh, developing and championing innovation attitudes and approaches creating ecosystems which foster the inclusive innovation coming up with new strategies and alternatives for innovations and collaborations then means to scale and sustain innovations encouraging governments to get you know involved and innovate then encouraging the universities and r&d institutions to also innovate and come up with innovation models innovations by smes encouraging all important sectors of the economy to innovate innovation in public service delivery multidisciplinary and globally competitive approaches for innovations and they also focus on setting up of state and sector innovation councils to help implement strategies for innovation in states and specific sectors so this council does all these important things and it discusses the importance of innovation uh, in our country now again some of the important opportunities for innovation have been highlighted by the council and they can happen at different levels product be it services processes organizational level governance social sector urban or rural and it could again involve you know different sectors different organizations public national international private individual institution whether big or small and then their hand in hand working creates lot of opportunities for innovation at all different levels at different scales the innovation paradigm to focus on inclusive innovation for of and by the people this is the indian model that is suggested by the council and it focuses on the inclusive innovation the most important thing is the focus on frugal innovation because there is already identification of lot of frugal innovation processes in our country and so the indian model of innovation focuses on frugal innovation that produces products and services which are affordable by more people without compromising quality also frugal in terms of the resources so innovation is needed where frugal is also understood in terms of the resources transform from a knowledge producing economy to a knowledge sharing society so these are some important points which are put forth while discussing the indian model of innovation and then there is also a discussion on innovation strategy which has these five important nodes so creating platforms encouraging healthy discourses and exchanges of ideas identifying the drivers which can be catalysts to provide uh, this kind of uh, change and innovation creating ecosystems and then fostering inclusion and all of these are interconnected and that's what forms the innovation strategy for innovation in india as defined by this council of innovation so while the focus is on platforms it includes you know products processes research and development science technology many more are uh, included within this innovation strategy focusing on the 
important node of creating platforms, but the ones that I have highlighted are more relevant when we are talking about continuity and revival of craft, focusing on the innovation and development part. And of course, like we were discussing, innovation just does not mean the science and technology, but it also has to impact the social change, it has to take a community and cluster in consideration and their way of life. So, while the uh, another important note is inclusion, it is aimed at the bottom of the pyramid and it focuses on awareness, access, affordability, availability, scalability, sustainability, innovations for and by the people. Creating ecosystem, incentives and awards, innovations in MSMEs, policies and programs, web and ICT tools. So, you know, training the artisans and craft persons in this digital medium, how they can be um, self-sufficient and they can also have online access and connect with the end user and different organizations. So, focus on drivers. Multidisciplinarity, collaboration, locally relevant, globally connected and competitive. So, the drivers of change which catalyze innovation could be one of these. And then expand space for discourse. So, healthy discussions, debates, new ideas and the creation of India Innovation Portal. So, if we see the institutional framework of the innovation councils, there is this National Innovation Council then there are state innovation councils and then there are sectoral innovation councils and then they take care of the innovation strategy and the innovation and development part in our country. Then there are also innovation clusters and there is a vision that is developed. So, connected ecosystem, then self-sustaining responsibility, then there are expanding roles of industry associations. So, we see research here, finance, government agencies, sectoral experts and then there is this interlinkage, interlinkage which forms this innovation cluster. Again, the role of cluster innovation center. So, there is also a cluster innovation center and it also has these important roles and establishing connects between all of them. So, already there is a lot of work which is done and some clusters have been identified and the innovation and uh, technology part has been executed there to some extent. So, we are not discussing that in detail, but just to highlight. So, there is the food processing sector which was considered the bamboo sector. We have been talking about the Ringal craft of Uttarakhand which is a dwarf bamboo. So, here it is Tripura. Then the brassware which is again a craft form, auto components, life sciences, Ayurveda and again Kerala and the sector furniture. So, all these different kinds of sectors have been uh, identified, the clusters have been identified and the innovation strategies for them have been developed and they are executed in you know different phases. So, there is also a very important focus on setting up a network of design innovation centers as new models of design education co-located in institutes of national importance. That is also a step ahead while talking about innovation and development in the country. And um, since it is about the design innovation centers and it is located within the institutes of national repute and there is a discussion on the design process, craft very innately comes into picture because there are craft design collaborations that have been tabbed, there are possibilities of experimentation and there are different kinds of boundaries which are blurring. So, craft, interior, architecture, design all the uh, approaches are being adopted where there could be a symphony of these and there could be innovation at the grassroots uh, levels. So, continuing you know the innovation and development and how collaboration training and research could be seen as important tools for innovation and development. So, again that is very important that you know the collaboration training and research part is fostered and lot of key stakeholders they are brought together and there are collaborations which are established. Support systems and infrastructures are given to the innovators. Inclusive innovation fund is also created that provides the right resources and incentives. And of course, there is this India innovation portal which creates lot of networks and linkages. So, seeing collaboration as an important tool while discussing the innovation and development strategies it is very important. And again, since we are talking about collaboration, 
this is something interesting that I found which you know discusses the craft design collaboration as an important tool for innovation and development. And here we see some sort of design development and the shared knowledge between the artisans and the designers. So, starting from a very fuzzy end to come up with something tangible which is achieved by the collaboration and shared knowledge of both these stakeholders. Further, the craft design collaboration, you know, it is also uh, discussed in terms of different tools, sketching, discussing, prototyping, presenting and then how this shared knowledge through all these tools and mediums, you know, comes into picture while identifying the problems, also the opportunities, what to design, how to design and getting to know which is the perfect material and what kind of products and processes are required. So, mapping what is desirable in craft and what is possible through design. That is an important approach. So, what all is already you know desirable when we talk about the craft and the craft community, what are their pre-existing techniques, their knowledge of aesthetics and material culture and you know their harmony with nature and then what else design could provide you know. So, some revival to the pre-existing techniques and then through design promotion of its local uniqueness, but giving a sort of a global approach. So, here design intervention part, the local craft industry, other industries and how there is a knowledge export here and knowledge import from here to here and this, this shared collaboration results in interesting innovations. We will see some of the works of the DICRC SEPT University very briefly and very visually how they have done some projects and focus on the innovation and development part. So, again they have this model of craft innovation and they usually conduct lot of workshops at the end of which there are some very innovative prototypes which are documented and disseminated. So, they have this project framework, then they have the collaboration uh, aspect, craft design process, what is the output and then it is finally disseminated. So, you know focusing here on copper, what is the framework and what is the design brief, then what all are the possible collaborations which are done to work further and what is the process which is adopted, where different craft persons and designers come together, different insights coming from different people who are exposed to different ideas and different uh, methods. Then interaction amongst all of them, demonstration, learning through the demonstration, ideation and exploration, going ahead of what already exists, discuss, create the craft design groups the artisan, the craft person, the students, the professionals and how do they ideate and come up with certain uh, interesting briefs to develop interesting prototypes. So, again experimentation and of course, some acknowledgement and appreciation to the people who have been involved just as a token of you know respect and appreciation. Again creation and experiment. So, some interesting prototypes that are generated which are not as part of the existing product range and which the craft person, the artisans, designers, professional students all of them uh, you know contribute in that in the creation of that output and uh, it also helps understand the material and the process and implement certain new ideas and come up with innovative prototypes. Of course, the dissemination part, the exhibition and the you know publication and media. So, again for their innovation and development you know they also have this uh, craft innovation studio and then again they follow a certain step by step process and a system. So, collaboration, project framework, craft design process, output, dissemination and eventually the craft connect, connecting different craft persons and different stakeholders. So, again we see here the kind of material or a project is identified, different collaborators are identified, they come together, they establish some interesting craft design processes, people working together, different stakeholders, certain kind of output is developed and then it is disseminated and then eventually there is a connect which is established and this whole team has a sort of a network. There are also initiatives like you know DICRC, triple ID fellowships. So, a lot of people come together. So, this was a proposal for design hub which was being created for Anushruti which is a social initiative of IIT Roorkee 
and uh, it was being worked upon and it was only in the stage of ideation where this design hub was considered as a unique pilot model which would identify the existing uh, craft skills and design skills of the school anushruti and the students uh, which possess those schools uh, skills sorry and then how you know again identifying partners and collaborators like how dicrc does a strong collaborative team is uh, created then they focus on strengthening the existing skills through vocational training and the different kinds of uh, uh, disciplines were considered not just already existing skill sets but you know graphic communication hospitality management and here we see the craft based design also into focus so how this uh, you know model where the existing skills are highlighted and then the collaborators coming in and strengthening the existing skills through vocational training and then these uh, adopting the craft design process of uh, uh, you know craft design process and varied stakeholders coming in together and then generating something new which is innovative interesting and something different from what already existed and you know there were like two uh, important uh, sides to the design hub so one is this and the second one was developing the new paradigms for pedagogy and entrepreneurship in this school where the children already possess lot of skills like which have been mentioned already then identifying the design related clusters in uttarakhand and tapping the indigenous potential and then how they come together working hands on with the local communities establishing partnerships and you know industry coming in uh, the students going to the industry for internship and again developing sort of collaboration and network and then come up with interesting designs and prototypes through you know resource sharing by making different groups creating workshops being a part of it and then uh, you know by forming a network and finally coming up with new range of designs which gave confidence to all the uh, children of anushruti as well as empowerment to the artisans craft persons and the indigenous communities uh, which came forward to collaborate so this was a sort of a, a model for the design hub which was only in the stage of ideation so i thought it could be interesting to discuss that so next module we will again continue with our discussions on continuity and revival of craft and we will be focusing on the resource building and dissemination perspective let us see some references thank you